Hello, this is Sean Patrick Kelly, and uh, here is my uh, interview for the horror documentary Satan Wants You uh, with the directors Sean Horler and Steve J. Adams. Uh, this interview was conducted shortly after the film screened at this year's Hot Doc. International Film Festival, and the uh, film also recently screened at Fantasia and is now opening across Canada. So I hope you enjoy this interview for Satan Wants You. Uh, what attracted you to the story of uh, Michelle Smith? Uh, I grew up in Victoria, BC, so this is where th this story takes place. The book was written there. Michelle and her psychiatrist, Larry Pazder, uh, both lived there and grew up. Michelle grew up there, she had her family's there. So this for me, my family moved to Victoria uh, right after the book was published and the story was everywhere in the city. So they were on the radio, they were on television, they are in the newspapers. And it wasn't just when the book came out, it was for 10 years after. So it's it's was quite the place to grow up when you're a young kid scared that Satanists are gonna steal you and sacrifice you late at night. <laughs> Okay, so the uh, documentary comes across as a mix of um, horror and true crime. So um, how did you strive to balance those aspects of the story? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the book itself is super gory. Um, there's a, a lot of blood in it. There's a lot. There's a lot. It's like uh, Sarah Marshall, uh, who's in the film, says it's a baby slaughterhouse. Um, so and you can see references uh, within the book from The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby. So we knew that we wanted to incorporate these themes into the film, and that's kind of where that's kind of where we started. And we really loved like the the B movie horror aspect, uh, and so we tried to we tried to weed that into the film. Uh, yeah, and the true crime component. I mean, a lot of the folks that we're about, or we're interviewing. There's a FBI special agent. There's a Wiccan police detective <laughs> from Vancouver. There are investigative reporters participating in this. And as Steve mentioned, the podcaster Sarah Marshall, who is the host of You're Wrong About. So there is an investigative component to the story. They all investigated the book and the past, and Michelle and Larry. And so that was just a natural thing that came out in the film because they, you know, they kept all their stuff. They had all their archive material. They had their police files. They had their notes. So it's just sort of like, yeah, this is going to be part of the film. So um, were those the uh, real audio recordings of the sessions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Um, we had really wanted to get our hands on one of them. Uh, and so we, we did a lot of research. We went through the book. It has all the acknowledgments of the people that worked uh, around the tapes. And we emailed them and tried to tried our hardest to get one. And we ended up getting one sent to us anonymously uh, towards the end of filming. Or sorry, towards the end of editing. So um, why do you think the satanic paddock remains such a fascinating subject after more than four decades? <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, it's happening again. Like, this is a cyclical thing in human history. It just repeats over and over these rumors of satanic cults or other groups of people abducting children, sacrificing them, drinking their blood. This is... Part of being human, these stories for some reason just keep cycling over and over. And we saw it recently when we, you know, when we started uh, getting deep into this film in 2018. It was right after Pizzagate in the U.S. And then QAnon happened, and you just saw. Here we are again. It's like, oh no, here it is again. <laughs> and this is the perfect time to actually look at an origin story of how it happened in the 1980s. I didn't at first know how to react to the film because, you know, you know, it's like very horror at the start of the film. And I there's like people snickering behind me. I don't know if I should join in. But then later you were, had people talking about making candles out of babies and that just kind of like threw me out. <laughs> OK, this is this is a ridiculous story. So so. Could you talk about the tone of the film? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that's one of the things when you when you look back from this distance in the future, um, you just kind of realize how absurd everything was. Um, we honestly, when we were making the film, we had our parts where we thought that it was humorous, but watching it with an audience and seeing the continuous reactions that were happening really surprised us. We, we didn't think it was going to hit like that. And also, I mean, it's like you if you're going to explore trauma and the story does explore real life trauma that came out of the satanic panic for us you know it's tempting to make a one note film that would just be really bleak and grim and sad however i think you need to have that other tone in there and since it is absurd and comical in many respects we wanted to find that balance between serious and funny so um how important for you was to have the representative from the Church of Satan there and talk about 
Anton LaVey's opposition to this whole satanic panic event. This is not what Satanism is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was... We were really happy to have Blanche participate in the film. Um, she, I think that she really expresses what the Church of Satan is and what Satanism means to her. Um, and I think that's a, a really good balancing point to what everybody thinks Satanism is about. And I think it was one of my favorite lines in the film, Blanche is a former high priestess of the Church of Satan. So she knows what she's talking about. And she says, you know, true Satanism is not a tolerance. It's not tolerating people's differences. It's a celebration of differences. Mm -hmm. And I think that's very different from many religions, right? Yeah, well, except I remember the um, documentary that came out a few years ago, um, Hail Satan, about the Satanic Temple. So they, they are just like, they're celebrating differences. And what I gather is I think that they're technically atheists, but they like use Satanism to like criticize Christianity and such. Mm-hmm. So um, the film heavily suggests that um, uh, Lawrence Pazer is like the true, quote unquote, villain of the story. So uh, do you think Michelle Smith... Smith was a victim, accomplice, or both? Um, both. I, I think that she was a, a victim of this type of therapy that was happening. Um, I, I definitely think that Larry was in a power position uh, when all of this was happening. But she also participated. Mm-hmm. Um, she participated in in it for over 15, around 15 years. And we, we found interviews of her as far ahead as like 1992, where she was still saying that this stuff was happening. And made money from it. So it's like, and this is an interesting thing now that we've had audiences watch this and we are starting to see feedback. A lot of people are struggling with this, you know, like the idea that she is a victim, but she also participated in a way that made her an accomplice. It's complicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think it's like, it's heavily suggested that it's like, it was a case of like transference and probably like hypnosis and like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and both, and, and then, then just, you, you had the titles at the end, it said that Michelle didn't want to participate in the film. So, uh, how did you get her sister involved to give the family side of the story? <laughs> Uh, Cheryl has been pretty open. We contacted her on Facebook originally, and she was she, she was ready to talk. She she wanted to kind of avenge uh, her mother and really just clear her mom's name um, because I think it has been a little tarnished through what Michelle has said about her. And yeah, no, Cheryl was excited to. to to participate. She came to the premiere uh, here in Toronto at Hot Docs and she thanked us the next day. And it was the first time she had seen the film and she was just really grateful for finally, after all these years, to have the chance to tell her story. Mm-hmm. So um, what do you hope audiences ultimately take away from Satan Wants You? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, really, uh, for us, I think we just want people to uh, like really look at the world around them, question things a, a little bit more, and not believe everything that they read. So, like, are you aiming the film more towards dark, true crime fans or horror fans? Or I think both. We yeah. wanted we wanted a crossover film, to be honest. And for us, this was always like we set out to make a horror documentary. Yeah, well, I, well, I saw I saw that like room board po- promoted the poster that sparked behind me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and. You have how many films do you see or like how many docs do you see that are actually a horror film you know yeah. both with well, genre um, stuff plus the real life work okay so i think that'll be it okay cool <laughs> perfect thank you thanks the sean kelly movies podcast is a production of skmovies.com episodes and show notes can be found at skmoviespodcast.ca and you can subscribe to us via spotify apple podcasts google podcasts and podcasts